A very good evening to all. Dear brothers in Christ, we thank our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ for giving me this wonderful opportunity to sit and discuss wonderful words of life. So today is a very, very important class because we are going to see a vision about the Gospel Age, how the Gospel Age was developed, so what all things happened, what all things can we expect in the near future. So regarding that, uh, we're going to study today uh, in a vision that is given to us uh, in the Bible. So uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can definitely ask uh, at the last of the class. We will uh, definitely discuss it. So in Zechariah 4 chapter, if you see, Zechariah was shown a vision. So let us see what was shown to Zechariah in the vision. Zechariah 4, chapter verses 1, 2, and 3, brother. Uh, okay, brother. Oh. Therefore, 1, 2, and 3, okay. It's written like this. Uh, ah. If you have the Bible, you can open and read. I think it's very small here. Uh, Okay, brother. Yeah, I can. The career for one and three. Uh, and the angel that talked with me came again and walked me, waked me as a man that is weakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What says thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps, three one, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. Yes. Sir. Okay. So here, the angel of the Lord came and shows uh, Zechariah a vision. In the vision, Zechariah saw a uh, two olive trees. You see. We all know about the olive trees that is given in the Bible. You see, olive trees, uh, you see, they give out uh, olive fruits uh, from which uh, oil is extracted. So, similarly, they saw two olive trees. And in between the olive trees, in the center of the olive trees, uh, there was a candlestick, uh, you see, which had seven lamps uh, in it, it seems. Uh, and uh, the, above the seven lamps, uh, there was a bowl, it seems. Uh, you see, and the bowl was connected to the seven lamps by seven pipes. You see, and uh, actually, uh, the golden oil from the olive tree actually came to the bowl, which is top of the lamp. And from the seven pipes came to the seven lamps. Uh, read Zechariah 4 chapter uh, verses... Uh, Mm. 11 and 12 brother. Uh, okay, brother. then answered I and said unto him what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof and I answered again and said unto him what did these two olive branches with two, the two golden pipes empty the golden oil of themselves. You see? So here uh, it is mentioned that the golden oil was emptied through two pipes uh, to that golden bowl. The golden bowl was above the seven, you see, uh, lampstand. So, as we all wonder, what is the meaning of this one? What is this two olive trees? What is this two pipes that are connecting? And what is the meaning of the bowl that is above the seven, uh, you see, candlestick? And what is the meaning of the seven lamps? Uh, we all wonder, no, we all are eager to know what is the meaning of this one. Similarly, Zechariah also was eager and asked the same question to the angel of the Lord. What are these, uh, my Lord? You see, uh, read verse 13 and 14, brother. Huh. And he answered and said, and answered me and said, 
no as though not who it be and i said no my lord then said he these are two anointed ones that stand by the lord of the whole earth see then angel asks uh, uh, zakaria do you know what are these sir uh, angel uh, when he was asked uh, zakaria replied lord uh, i don't know what are these sir uh, then the angel replied saying these are the two anointed ones uh, we stand by the lord of the whole earth these are the two anointed ones we stand in the presence of the lord of the whole earth just uh, this thing was told so with this one how do we find out the meaning of the what is the meaning of the two olive trees and uh, seven uh, you see uh, uh, candlesticks so what is the meaning of this one okay now do we read uh, about the candlesticks anywhere in the bible yes we read about the candlesticks in the bible in the tabernacle also it is mentioned in book of revelation read brother revelation 113 brother ha uh, 112 and 13 brother ha huh. okay brother uh, revelation 112 and 13 and i turn to see the voice that is speak with me and being torn i saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like upon the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and get um, about the paps with a golden griddle mm. see in the midst of the seven candlestick one like unto the son of man was clothed in a raiment and he was doing the trimming work you see so we all know very well you see in the tabernacle when there was a candlestick uh, that was in the holy place uh, the high priest has to trim it uh, morning and evening and always keep the lamp burning so similarly here jesus is seeing walking in midst of the seven you see uh, candlesticks okay now what is the seven candlesticks that is mentioned in uh, revelation the answer is given in verse 20 revelation 120 but ah the mystery of the seven stars which do so it is in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angel of the seven sources and the seven candlestick which do so it is are the seven sources see the seven candlesticks means the seven churches so here the bible itself gives us a clue for so the bible bible is a dictionary remember the first class how to read the bible here a little there a little search the scriptures for each and everything the bible should give the answer so similarly the seven candlesticks the seven lamps means the seven churches okay now which are the seven churches sir does the revelation speak about seven churches about the mosam no seven churches of the bible ah you see let us read revelation 111 brother uh, okay brother thing i am alpha and omega the first and the last and what those things write in a book and send it upon the seven churches which are in asia unto ephesus and unto samaria and on to pergamos and on to petidia and on to sardis and on to philadelphia philadelphia and on to lodikia ah you see here the bible clearly says which are the seven churches now which are the seven churches ha huh? the seven churches which are in asia isn't it Ephesus, yeah. Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These are the seven churches. Uh, you see, that uh, represents the uh, seven uh, golden lampstand. Okay. Now I mention only these seven churches. Huh? There were uh, many big churches in Jerusalem, in Rome. You see. he should have mentioning any of those things here the small churches uh, pergamos uh, smyrna 
you see laodicea thyatira it is nowhere mentioned uh, in the bible at least philadelphia philippians uh, letter is there ephesians letter is there but what about the other churches why these small uh, churches uh, are given here you see in the bible what does uh, number 7 mean huh? what does number 7 mean complete complete uh, you see 7 days god created you see huh? Seven means complete. Seven days you have to work. Seven days in a week. Six days you have to work. One day you take a rest. So, six plus one, seven, seven, seven. So, more than 40 times, the number seven appears in the Bible. Seven in the Bible always means a complete number. So, unto the seven churches means, unto the seven, the complete church in Asia. So, what does it mean? If you see, actually, we know the gospel age from christ first advent to christ second advent the church period can be divided into seven parts you see seven different parts can be divided you see the thing that is mentioned in the first church ephesus actually took place during the days of the apostles when jesus was crucified when the apostles were anointed with the holy spirit during the pentecost and since then what all happened in the church that is mentioned in the first church uh, ephesus uh, so similarly next uh, huh? about the second church what all happens during the second period of the gospel age uh, is given in the name of the second uh, church uh, similarly the third one fourth and fifth one the last one you see means uh, the last church uh, who is going to leave during the second presence of the lord not second coming second presence of the lord since 1874 what all things are going to happen that is given in the seventh church laodicea church okay so the gospel is divided into seven parts each and every part represent uh, you see the particular events happened in that uh, particular period that is represented by each and every church uh, efficiency uh, Yeah, Ephesus, uh, Smyrna, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Okay. Now, here it says, unto the angel, which is there at the church uh, in Ephesus. So, God is referring to angels, no? So, why should we bother? You see, many people neglect this one, you see. But in a Bible, angels actually doesn't mean literally angels only. because it also means uh, god's human being also how we all know about john the baptist you know john the baptist actually prepared the way for our lord jesus christ let us see what does the bible say about him mark 122 brother sorry mark 12 you know some brother mark first chapter second verse okay brother hmm and it is written in the prophets behold i send my messenger before the face who is shall prepare the way before thee ah he shall send a messenger you see that means what he shall send a angel can uh, ashish brother can you read it in nepali bible okay mark 1 2 mark 1 2 yeah just to bhavishy मिनिस्ट्री सो Yes, in the Bible, everywhere angel doesn't mean what? Ah, huh? angels. They also means human being also human representatives who are doing God's will. So here, when it says to seven churches, you see, and the uh, seven angels, it means the seven periods of the gospel age. and each and every church had a messenger who could deliver god's message to the period of the church who were living at that time okay 
Now let us see what actually happened in the first church, Ephesus. See, Ephesus church was from 33 AD to 70 AD. That is given to us in Revelation 2nd chapter, 1 to 6. Brother. Read, brother. Revelation 2nd chapter, brother. Most brother, please read okay, verse brother. 2 and 3. Uh, Revelation verse verse one in uh one to six two and three no verse one two and three ah uh, okay unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walked in the midst midst of the seven golden candlesticks I knew the works and the labor and the patience and how do cans not be, cannot bear them which are evil, and that has tried them which say they are apostle and are not, and has found them liars, mm. and has mm. yeah three also right brother, mm. and has born and has patience and for my name namesakes has labored and has not fainted. See, it says, uh, I know thy works uh, and the labor and the patience. Uh, this is the during the apostles' days uh, when uh, the church was anointed with Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Uh, the church uh, during the days of the apostles uh, worked very hard to establish the church all over the world. Uh, you see, they were so zealous. They were bold. You see, they were persecuted by Romans, the Jewish people, and the Gentiles as well. Even then, they were, you see, patience and labored much. You see, that's the reason God appreciates them. I, uh, I know thy words. You see, but uh, there was uh, some problem in the first church itself. What was the problem? You see, read verse 4, Buddha. Huh? Never the, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left their first love. Ah, thou hast forgotten thy first love. You see, why? Why they have forgotten the first love? You see, because in verse 2 it says, you see, thou cannot bear them which are evil. That means evil brethren who was speaking false doctrines, were already in the church. And it says, though I strike them, we say they are apostles and are not, and are found liars. They were false apostles, claiming to be apostles through false doctrines during the first church itself. You see, which thing actually God hated? Read verse uh, uh, 6. Brother. six. Huh. But this do has that do hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You see, I also hate who Nicolaitans. Now, who are these Nicolaitans? If you see the word Nicolaitans, actually means the one who lords over the church. Even when the apostles were alive, there were some people who were always trying to dominate over the brethren there. This was a Nicolaite and spirit. Hence, what happened? Uh, many of the people, uh, you see, love, you see, became cold. So, this was during the first uh, church period when the apostles uh, really began their ministry, when churches were established all over the world. Okay. Now, let us read about the second church. The second church is Smyrna. That is from 70 AD to 313 AD. They are given in Revelation. Second chapter, 8 to 10. We will read verse 8 and 9, brother. Huh? And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, and these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know the work and the tribulation and poverty, but though are trees, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jewish and are not, but are the Synagogue of Satan. Ah, synagogues of Satan. You see, it says, I know thy works, uh, tribulation and poverty. The church during those days, uh, they had uh, so much of love upon each other 
that they sold all their property and came and submitted at the feet of the apostles. And apostles distributed everything equally and everybody had uh, everything in common. There was no rich, there was no poor. Hence, the church actually was poor in the spirit of the world. But uh, how are they in faith? Uh, you see, it says, but thou art rich. Uh, though you are poor in physical things, in faith, how are they? They were very strong. They were very rich. You see? But what is the warning given to us in verse 10? Verse 10, brother. Huh? Fear none of those things which do shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tired, and you shall have tribulations ten days. Be the faithful until unto death, and I will give them a crown of life. You see, be the faithful unto death. You shall have tribulation how many days? Sir? Ten days. What is this ten, ten days? days? Uh, for a prophet, one day means one year. So that means uh, prophetic language. Ten days means ten years. So in ten years, there was a severe persecution during the Diocletian period from 303 AD to 330 AD. He completely decided to annihilate the complete Christians. So hence, there was a severe persecution during those days. But what does God say? Even though we are uh, uh, to die, be though faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. So this was in the second period uh, of the church uh, since the Pentecost. Now the third church. The third church name is called as Pergamos. This is from 313 A.D. To 1157 AD, the third church. Read verse 12 and 13, brother. The word verse 12 and 13, brother. Huh? Into the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? This thing said, He which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know the work and where the doers even where Satan cities and the whole is fast my name. And has not denied my faith. Even those days within Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelt. Ah, you see, where Satan dwells. Uh, this was the period of the rise of the Antichrist. When Antichrist was uh, slowly coming to power, you see, that time that is the time that the Pope uh, began to rule as king. You see, he was exalted uh, almost to be equal to God. That is the reason he says, I know where thou dwellest, uh, even where Satan's seat is. So Satan completely came and settled in the church. Through whom? Through the papacy system. You see, hence, uh, you see, what does it say? Uh, it mentions about Nicolaitans and Antipas. You see, it says, uh, even in those days, wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr. Who is this Antipas? You see, anti means against. Pa means what? Papa, Pope. So, Antipa means the one who is against Pope. The faithful church, even though Pope ruled, they were against the Pope's rule, which was against the word of God. Hence, you see, this was the high rise of the Antichrist. Okay. Now, verse 14. So, what was uh, happening in those periods? Verse 14, brother. Huh? But I have a few things against thee. Because though that ha that dear them that follow the doctrine of Balaam, who thought Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat this, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornications. Ah, you see, Balaam is there in the churches. Now, how come Balaam has come in the church? He was there in the Old Testament in Numbers, you see. But here, again, Balaam is there, it seems. Now, you know the story about Balaam. Do you know, brother? Mon, Mon, brother? Yeah. Do you know the story? Ah, you see, Balaam was a prophet of God. But he got mixed with uh, Bala, king of Moab. And Moab so influence, he decided to curse the people of Israel who were actually blessed. You see? And how did he, you see, try to pull the people of Israel to commit sin by making them to commit fornication, idolatry. You see? 
So similarly, the Balaam spirit was there in the church uh, during the rise of Antichrist. It was uh, compromised to mingle with the world, the worldly spirit. Uh, you see, here a little, there a little, serving two masters. Uh, you see, the brethren. So this was during the Pergamos spirit. Now verse uh, 15, brother. What does it say? Verse 15? Hmm. Verse 15 said, uh, So had though also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Which things I hate. See, there uh, in the first church, uh, we read about Nicolaitans. Huh? You see, one who wanted to lord over the church. You see, but here, what is happening now? Nicolaitans are there. You see, but they were completely dominated, but the church hated them. Which actually was hated by God also. Hence, uh, there was a slight, slow rise of the Antichrist to the power. Okay, this is the third church. Fourth church is Thyatira from 1157 AD to 1367 AD. Revelation 2nd chapter 18 to 23. Read verse 19, brother. Huh. 19, right, brother? Hmm. I know the work and charity and the service and faith and the patience and the word and the last to be more than the first. Ah, I know the service, you see, the charity, the faith and patience. Uh, you see, last to be more than the first. I faith, the works are more than the first. Okay. Now, this was a period of the Antichrist. Earlier, it was the rise of Antichrist, but here, Antichrist had completely come to power. Now, read what was there in Antichrist, verse 20. Not with uh, not with the standing, I have a few things against thee, because those sufferers, that omen, that devil, that devil, that devil, Jezebel, you see, that's a bill. Ah, Jezebel, you read about Jezebel, yeah, yeah, uh, during the days of uh, Elisha, Elijah, yeah. uh, Elijah was the prophet, uh, who was the king, Ahab was the king. And Ahab Jezebel was, was the queen. Huh? So, yeah, what did kill. The, correct, correct. They killed all the God's prophets and they yeah. put uh, Baal worship into practice. So, so, similarly, here also, when the Antichrist was completely come to power, this woman, Jezebel, the false church, she completely dominated over her husband, Ahab, the government, the kings, the emperors of this world, and subdued them. Instead of the kings, Jezebel actually ruled. The paper system was ruled all over the world. What did she do? She killed all the God's prophets. All God's children who had faith on the Bible were completely, you see, destroyed. But some people were left like Elijah and some group of school of prophets. You see, so similarly that was happened during the days of uh, the papacy rule that was called as the dark ages where there was no truth at all the bible was written in latin language there was no rain during the days of elijah there was no truth at all you see the bible was written in the latin language but yet uh, god's children survived where uh, very far from the palace in the wilderness near the mountains where a small brook uh, gave a little bit of water they had food uh, through the hands of the you see birds uh, you see so that is how the church got sustained in this fourth period. Okay. Now, fifth period is uh, Sardis uh, from 1367 to 15, 17 AD. Revelation 3rd chapter verses 1 to 4. This is a period before Reformation. Read verse 2, brother. Huh? Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found the work perfect before God. Mm. You see, only few were left. You see, no, only few are there. Strengthen them. You see, that means when the Reformation began, almost the faithful people were completely persecuted and killed. Only few people were there alive. And God tells them to strengthen them. You see, and encourage them to remain faithful. You see, now verse... Uh, uh, Two uh, is over. Read verse 3, brother. Huh? Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repeat. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee 
and a thief, and thou shalt not know what honor I will come upon thee. Ah, you see, repent. You see, huh? repent, or else I will come and you see, come like a thief upon thee. So here a warning was given through the Reformation for the false church, the papacy system to repent. And we all know very well that papacy did not repent at all. You see, but few people who heard the truth here and there at all, they completely, you see, uh, rejected this uh, Antichrist system, the Roman Catholic system, and they came out uh, and uh, served the Lord. Okay, this is the, the fifth period, the Sardis period. Okay, now sixth period is Philadelphia period from 1517 to 1874 AD, verse uh, third chapter, verses uh, 7 to 9. Read verse uh, 7 and 8, brother. Huh? Verse 7 and 8, right, brother? Uh, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? This thing said, He that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened. I know the work before I have said before the open door and no man can shut it for the head a little strength and had kept my word mm. and has not denied my name. I has not denied my name. You see, he that has the keys of David, you see, he, if he opens, no man can shut it. And if he shuts it, no man can open it. So what is this so shutting and opening? You see, actually, the Bible was shut. It was locked in Latin language. But uh, in the Reformation, this is the period of Reformation. You see, when the Protestants protested against the Roman Catholic system and came out, Bible society was, you see, open in all over the world. Bibles was printed in all the languages. So once God opened this door, nobody could close it. You see, Satan could not do anything again to close or shut down the Bible societies or bring out the knowledge of truth. Okay? So this is the sixth church. Okay. The seventh church is the last church, the Laodicea church, is from 1874 till the completion of the church. Revelation 3rd chapter, verse 14 to 20. Read verse uh, 15, brother. Huh? Uh, 15, right? Mm -hmm. I know the work that though are neither cold nor hot. I would do wait cold or hot. Uh, see, how is the condition of the church uh, at the second advent? Uh, we are living in this period only. Huh? So second presence. Since 1874, Christ's presence has happened in this world. But how is the church condition? It says, neither cold nor hot. Ah, very good, brother. You are neither hot nor cold. Hot means what? Bubbling. You see? Yeah. Very zealous, very active in the Lord. And cold means completely, you see, gone into the world. The church is neither in the world nor in God. They are very neutral. You see, very clever. Like cat on the wall. It can be this side, it can be that side also. You see? They're very clever. But God doesn't like it. You see? They are big, big churches. You see, they don't stand for the truth. They're not fully devoted. They're not even fully worldly also. They pretend to be good Christians and all. You see? Eh? But, huh? what does Christ say? Read the next verse. 16. Huh? So then, because thou are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew them out of my mouth. Ah, just because you are neither hot nor cold, not interested in the world, not interested in the Lord also, just try to be a neutral Christian, God spewed him out of the mouth. That means since 1874, Babylon was rejected by God and God no more used the nominal churches to sp speak forth his truth. You see, hence, uh, God rejected, spewed them means uh, they are no more the mouthpieces of God. And how is the church condition? Read verse 17. Huh? Because thou says, I am rich and increased with goods, and I have not, I and I have need of nothing, hmm. and knowest not that thou art rich and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Hmm. 
Uh, you see, at least yes. Uh, what is the mentality of the church today? Oh, we are rich. We don't need anybody's support. We are getting good offerings. No need for the truth and all these things and all. You see, that is the condition of the church. No, everybody are wealthy. All well enough. They don't no more depend upon the Lord. But what does the God say? In God say they are wretched. They are nothing. They think they are walking on the heavenly salvation path. Well, they are walking on no more in the narrow way at all. They will all come in the worldly resurrection new brain. Therefore, he says, you see, repent. Verse 8. You see, he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire. You see, the dome must be rich and white raiment. The robe of righteousness, white from Christ. And, uh, you see, and, uh, huh? Anoint thy eyes with eyes salve. Open. Ask Lord for the Holy Spirit that your eyes of understanding may be opened. So this is the condition of the church today. Okay. Now, what did we see? We saw about the seven. You see? What did we see? Seven candlestick. You see? That means the seven churches. That the seven church period we saw. Now, these seven churches got the oil through seven pipes. Correct, no? Huh? Now, from where did the oil come? You see? First, it came from the holy tree through these two pipes into the bowl. From the bowl, through seven mediums, it came to the seven lamps. What is the meaning of this one? Huh? Now, you tell me, who is above the church? See, this seven lamps is the church. Who is above the church? Who is head of the church? Paul. Huh? Christ. Very good, Buddha. Jesus Christ. So, this bowl represents Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, olive oil means what in the Bible? Olive oil was used to anoint, you see, the priest, high priest, kings. So, olive oil means what? Oil in the Bible represents what? Anointing. It is used on anointing. Yeah. Hmm. God has anointed us with what? Spirit. Very good. Holy Spirit. So, these two olive trees from which the golden oil comes represents the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit, you see, is given to the church. How? Through, through Christ. Jesus. Yes, through Christ. What does it mean that the Christ doesn't have Holy Spirit? He has to give from the trees. No, which means if the church has to get the understanding of the truth, you see, if the church has to get to know about the Bible, this can be God only through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> only through Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of understanding is given to the churches. Okay, now what are the two olive trees? Huh? Correct, now read Revelation 11 chapter. 3 and 4, brother. Revelation 11 chapter, verse 3 and 4. Which are the two olive trees? Revelation and 11. I will, uh, read. Okay, brother. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three scores days, clothing in sackcloth. These are two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. See, these are the two olive trees standing before the God of the whole earth. Same verse that is mentioned, Zechariah is mentioned here. You see, it says, these two olive trees are God's two witnesses, which witnessed about God in sackcloth. How many days, brother, is given? Thousand? Uh, it's uh, thousand two hundred and thirty scores days. Ah, that means thousand two hundred and sixty days. Thousand two hundred and three score days. One score means twenty years. So, three score means 60 years. Okay? So, yeah. 1260 days. Now, have we read about 1260 days somewhere else? Remember? Yeah. Uh, which class? Uh, before. Yeah, we I read it already. Yes. Uh, mm, I'll give you a clue. Is... Hmm. Okay, clue. Uh, we read a period about uh, Antichrist. Huh? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. On Antichrist. Yes. See? It is during the period of Antichrist, 1260 days. 
1260 years from 539 to 79 AD, God's two witnesses, you see, was completely covered in sackcloth. It was not allowed to come outside. It was buried. Which are two witnesses that was buried during the dark ages. Tell me, during the dark ages, during the Pope's rule, these two witnesses was not allowed at all. Very easy. I'll give you a clue. Mm. I'll give you a clue. Okay. What is there in your hand? In my hand, Bible. Ah, ah, word of God. Very good. Word of God. Now, how many portions has got the Bible? How many portions? Ah, how many parts are there in the Bible? Two parts. Ah, which one? Old Testament and New Testament. Very good. This Old Testament and New Testament was completely hidden in sackcloth in Latin language. Nobody could understand. So, yet it witnessed about God. These are the two olive trees. The two olive trees means God's Old Testament and New Testament. What does it mean? Uh, eh? Got it, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means, that's the reason I told you, if the Bible has to be understood, if the Old Testament and New Testament has to be understood by the church, it is only through Christ. You see, the oil came from the Bible to Christ, then to the church. The understanding of the word of God is only given through Christ, through the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Got it, brother, clearly? Yes, yes, brother, yeah. Now, now there is also seven pipes here. It doesn't come directly. Each and every lamp has got different pipes. Sir. Now, what are these pipes? Sir? These pipes are the mediums through which uh, actually, what is given? The oil is given. The understanding of the Bible is given. So, in each and every church, there was an angel selected by the Lord to give the truth to the people of the church living in that period. Now, as already told to you, angel in the Bible doesn't mean little angel. Correct, no? Yeah, like uh, uh, John was said. Very good. Like John the Baptist was compared to angel. He was not a little angel. He was a human being, but yet he represented God. He was doing the Lord's work. Hence, uh, he was God's messenger. He was God's uh, representative. Read Malachi also. Brother. Read Malachi 2, 17. Malachi 2, 17. Please read, brother. Uh, okay, brother. Malachi 2, 17, right? Hmm. Mm. It is written like this, Malachi 2, 17. Uh, you have... Where the Lord with your oars. No, no. It... Mal Malachi 2.17. 2.7. Sorry. Please forgive. 2.7. Uh, uh, okay, brother. Uh, 2.7 is written like this. For the priest lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messen messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is a messenger. Who is the messenger of the Lord of hosts? Uh, priest. The priest is priest. the angel of the Lord. He was a human being. But yet God spoke through him. So seven angels means seven human beings whom God has selected as an angel to be his representative during the church period. Hence, uh, you remember, you see, we just spoke about the seven uh, churches now, correct now? Yeah. Now, what, what did actually the Bible say? Did you read carefully? Read again. Let, let us observe and see. Revelation 2 1, you read with her. My little children's. No, no, no. Revelation is... 2 1. Revelation 2 1. Ah, sorry. Unto the angel of the source of Ephesus. Ah. Right. See? These things. It was told to whom? Unto the angel of the source. Angel. So God Please. is speaking through the angel to that particular church. Got it? Now, we will see who are the seven angels for the seven church period. Correct now? You yeah. see? The first church was Ephesus. That means we saw it was during the apostles' days when uh, since the Pentecost, uh, the church was developed and established in all the places. And uh, the Lord used Apostle Paul as the first angel during that particular period to establish his church all over the world. 
we know very well you see apostle paul did a beautiful work isn't it he established many churches all over the world he went to asia he went to rome he established in corinthians you see there so many journeys that apostle paul did correct now brother is given in the bible no yeah yeah then moreover majority of the new testament is written by whom apostle paul apostle paul more than 50% 27 books are there but 14 letters is written by apostle paul himself you see and not only that one ha huh? tabernacle you see is written by whom apostle paul is given in book of hebrews you see who knew about the tabernacle that was actually signifying christ type pant type all the experiences of israel in the wilderness that how a woman should behave in the church you see tabernacle the... is written by apostle paul yeah in hebrews book of hebrews he mentions about tabernacle elaborately you no know? chapter 8 uh, in... chapter 9 um in new uh, old testament it is i think it's uh, by moses yes but the meaning of what the things are mentioned in old testament apostle paul clearly explained you see uh, in new testament correct or brother okay brother ah you see otherwise we wouldn't have understood what is the meaning of candlestick what is the meaning of the bread what is the meaning of that uh, incense what is the meaning of sacrifice until yeah. apostle paul wrote so god spoke through whom through that angel apostle paul correct ah yeah ah uh, he suffered a lot you see he died for uh, angel lot. angel is only the title right brother is like uh, designation i mean position well, is he was a real man but angel was given title is it yes that means he is a god's representative that simply angel the word angel means actually god's representative see angel means what devadoot means what i think nepal it comes devadoot correct mm, i don't know in nepal ali ashish brother what does the word come in nepal swargadoot ah swargadoot you see swargadoot doot means what doot means messenger ambassador you see in you in, in nepal you have doot correct ah ambassador sir yeah. there no rajdoot rajdoot ah, ah rajdoot yeah. Oh, motorbike rajdut <laughs> so rajdut means what one who is representing the nation you see ambassadors they represent the nation to everybody because what does it mean that he is literally angel no read hebrews 132 brother hebrews 132 brother Hebrew thirteen two is written like this: Be not forget forgetful to insert in uh, strangers, for thereby some have entertained angel unawares. Uh, see, if we uh, entertain uh, men, the God children is like entertaining angels because they are God's representative. Simply, it means God's representative. Okay, okay they are not little angels. Got it? Hmm. So God has chosen them for a particular period and particular purpose. Okay. yeah okay now apostle paul was the first uh, person to be selected by the lord to use him as a messenger bible clearly says no you are my chosen vessel correct huh? yeah very good okay good so next angel for the church of spirna was apostle paul john apostle john you see he wrote uh, you see three books and book of revelation he was the last of the apostles to die he was the youngest of the apostles you see to live with jesus he was almost a teenager when he decided to follow jesus he was one of the closest of the all the apostles you see and uh, the writing of apostle paul john's uh, letter is totally different and unique from all the other apostles you might have observed many times the word father is used by apostle john you see he doesn't address uh, god as god he addresses uh, him as father because jesus was so close to him that all the things uh, secret things were told to john he understood the feelings of jesus hence uh, 
he could really understand how jesus was in contact in touch with his father so hence uh, the bible gives complete information about gosh uh, jesus's divinity through apostle john he was a loving apostle the last apostle to die okay so the second uh, person was used during the second church period was uh, apostle john okay Now the third church period you see pergamos remember uh, almost at the rise of antichrist you see almost uh, antichrist was coming to power during that time god used areas as his messenger to give food for his faithful church people who lived during the days you see areas was actually a presbyter of uh, alexandria he he was actually offered the position of a bishop he denied it and he highly esteemed jesus you see and uh, he was the one who clearly stood for the differentiation between god and son of god during that time there was a opponent whose name was athanasius who believed that uh, jesus and god are one and the same but arius stood for the cause then there was a very great commotion in the entire rome hence the king had to call for a council the council of nicaea in 325 ad you see and that is the time that uh, arius uh, was banned in a uh, island uh, where they were full of cannibals because of his faith as majority of the people would not read the bible they believed in the word of athanasius that jesus and god are one and the same that is a time that the concept of trinity slowly crept into the church you see but arius was so faithful to the lord that after he was isolated in the cannibal island within a year he converted everybody as a christian and emperor was so much pleased that he brought him again back to the you see courts so this is about arius ha so which is, how many churches are over Mosambala very good three now fourth church fourth church the angel that is a, a person whom god used much was peter waldo tayatira you see that is during the days of the antichrist antichrist was peak peter waldo actually uh, did lot of god's work peter waldo actually was a very rich person but was so wealthy that uh, he read the bible and understood the bible gives so much clarity to the people and uh, really opened everybody's eyes so he wanted this bible to be translated uh, so the common people can read you know what did he do he sold all his property he translated the bible printed uh, the bible yeah in french and freely he wanted to distribute to all the christians he bought a ship completely filled with the bible he wanted to give it to all the people so that he may everyone may read and understand the bible pope got this news that he has printed the bible and is going through ship pope paid the money purchased the entire ship brought it to the shore peter waldo was arrested all the bible was brought and it was laid in the center peter waldo was tied to the you see a, uh, what do you say a big pillar and uh, with that bible peter waldo was burnt alive you see during mm-hmm. that time peter waldo prayed to the lord for one thing lord please open the eyes of the emperor as he prayed similarly the eyes of the emperor was opened many many years before that is also a prophecy that is given in revelation because of which the king james version was translated exactly in the year that is determined in book of revelation we are going to study all these things in the future okay brother okay, so brother. peter waldo you see was the angel whom the lord used at that time okay now fifth church you see that is uh, you see uh, post reformation you see john wickliff 
John Wycliffe was actually called as a morning star of uh, reformation. He was the one who translated the Bible in English. You see, and he prepared discourses in English. You see, so that everybody might understand. And he, and he clearly declared that the Bible is the only source of faith. And he accused the church or, of interfering in political affairs, which was not supposed to be done. You see, and more than 200 doctrines he wrote to attack the mass. Mass means, you know, the Lord Supper taking every now and then. He was the one who clearly identified and clearly revolted the Pope. Uh, what all he is doing is against the Bible. And he clearly pointed out that the Pope is the great Antichrist that is mentioned in the Bible. And he was actually a scholar, you see, in Oxford University. You know, he had written so many books. Huh? But once he died, Pope ordered all his books to be burnt and the Pope hated him so much that 43 years after his death, his skeletons were, uh, you see, completely removed from the grave and those were burnt and his ashes were scattered so that he may not come in the resurrection. You see, so that time, John Wycliffe did an excellent work. He, he prepared many individual, uh, you see, brethren, to go and preach to the whole world, uh, which are things mentioned in the Bible, which are against the Pope. So slowly then what happened? The Reformation seed was sown. So this was about the fifth church. The sixth church is Philadelphia. You know, the angel whom the Lord used during that time is Martin Luther. We all know very well, Martin Luther did an excellent work. Martin Luther was actually a monk. You see, his father was actually a farmer. He worked very hard. He wanted his son to become a lawyer. But as he began to grow, when he came to the teenagers, he had that guilty conscience that he was a sinner. He was sinning. And he could not, uh, you see, uh, control his emotions. And he could not stand before God, uh, even for prayer. And this thought always tortured him. And uh, this guilty feeling made him to fast and pray, do all sorts of things, uh, to please the Lord and get the conviction that his sins are forgiven. He even went to Rome. You know, already go to Rome. He walked all the way to Rome. And as he went to Rome, he kneeled down on the knees. He climbed all the steps of Rome. You see, all the relics were touched and kissed. You see, and uh, thinking that uh, his soul will get peace. But even after doing all these things, he could not attain peace at all. He used to chastise himself with whips fasting and various other things. You see, a uh, man who was very healthy, became so thin, you see, so lean. Then, one day, when he was reading the Bible, one verse touched him very much. You know, which is that one? Romans 1.17. Read, brother. Romans 1.17. Okay, brother. It is written like this, Roman 1.17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And it is written, the just shall live by faith. Just shall live by faith, but not by works. So there is no need for me to chastise myself, do some works and all to please the Lord. It is by faith. If I have faith, my Lord will forgive all my sins. This uh, you clearly identified from this verse. And since then, with great conviction and faith, he began to read the Bible. And you know, after reading the Bible, he clearly came to know so many things the Pope did was against the Bible. Hence, he wrote 95 points which are against the Pope. You know, all these 95 points, what did he do? He nailed at the church door in which he was a monk. You know, when did he nail it? October 31st, 1517. Why October 31st night he nailed it? Why? Because November 1st, you know what is November 1st for Christians? So, uh, um, November 1st was um, All Saints Day. So you knew very well whoever Christians who did not come to the church, they will definitely come to the church on November 1st. Because but touching the relics of the saints, they had the thought that they would become pure. 
all their sins will be forgiven, their souls and all will go from hell to heaven. This is all weird thoughts by that. So, Martin Luther knew that uh, everybody will come definitely mourning for the church. In the night, a big, uh, you see, uh, poster was put on the door. 95 points. Uh, Pope uh, releases uh, the soul from purgatory for money. Why does he do, do, do it for free? Pope sells indigenous. Uh, for forgiveness of sins, he, he sells uh, tokens on earth, which is against God. Uh, you see, and because of this uh, uh, funds only, the St. Peter's Cathedral is uh, built today. You see, and uh, so many things, uh, like uh, what we say, brother, uh, the Lord's Supper, you see, which has to be taken per year, was actually found by Martin Luther. You see, many concepts about soul, soul dies. So many things, uh, you see, uh, was uh, totally revealed by Martin Luther. Actually, when uh, this uh, thesis was uh, put on the board, uh, this news went to Rome. Pope thought, uh, oh, some monk is drunk and written something. Don't worry. Within a week, uh, all is, uh, you see, Nasha will come down, then he will ask forgiveness from me. But you know what happened? Within one week, every people understood what all Pope is doing wrong and they demolished all the churches in Germany. All the Roman Catholic churches, majority were demolished. A great Protestant reformation started. You know, then the Pope issued a bull, arrest warrant to Martin Luther. Come, you have to come and stand before me and answer all these things. Pope burned the bull in front of everybody and told, I will stand for the truth. And he went to Rome. He boldly claimed before Pope what all things he has told is wrong. And the Pope was shocked. The Emperor was so surprised to see one person standing against Pope. Because during that day, everybody feared the Pope. Because Pope, if he says like that, everybody, they thought that they will get curses from hell. Like this, you will get blessings from heaven. But nothing worked out. You see, and the Emperor supported him. You see, and took him and uh, made him to live in a dungeon. You see, a very, very deep place uh, in uh, under this palace. All the facilities was given to him. And that is the time that he translated the entire Bible in Germany. You see, and after that one, when he came out, uh, he married, you see, and uh, he lived a celibate life. Uh, and, he, and he lived in the monastery itself. Uh, and this was encouraging to all the brothers, uh, that they may also can marry. You see. So this is how Martin Luther did the reformation. We know the result. All the various uh, protection churches are formed because of this man's uh, efforts. So he was the angel to the church of the sixth church. Okay. Got it, brother, clearer? Yes, brother. Now let us come to the last church where we are living. Okay. Now, whom did God use at the last church period where we are living since 1874? As God had used so many individual persons who were faithful to the Lord. Similarly, during the 11th, 7th, uh, you see, huh? church period, God used one faithful brother. His name was Charles Stays Russell since 1874. Charles Stays Russell, you see, was a faithful brother, was born in uh, 15, uh, 1852, in February 16th, you see. Until the age of 15 years, he also used to believe what all the churches used to believe. His mother was a very strict person, he nurtured the child in a very faithful way. Whenever he used to go to school, while returning from the school, he used to take a chalk piece uh, and charcoal and wrote, uh, write it on the wall. Don't sin, you will go to hell. You see, but once... Uh, his mother passed away. He had this uh, question bothering in the mind. Why, if God is so loving, why would he put all the people to hell? When he discussed so many things uh, with the unbeliever, but the Russell was not able to con convince even the unbeliever that God is a God of love. Then Brother Russell, if he decided to leave the Bible, he went out of the Bible to various religions, so Chinese, Japanese, etc., etc. He read all the religions, then came to a conclusion that the God of Bible is much better than all the other religion. And he, with a renewed mind, with a open mind, he began to read the Bible. Then he clearly understood the God's truth that hell is called as Hades. 
Hell is called as Sheol. Hell is called as Gehenna. Hell is called as Tartaro in the Bible. And this means it is a place of the dead and not a place of torment. Okay. If hell is a place of torment, if hell is not a place of torment, it's just a place of burial, a dead go. Then what happens to the soul? Then he began to study about soul. Then he came to know the soul dies. Oh, if the soul is dying, then what the preachers are preaching that the soul goes to hell and heaven is a wrong thing. Then he understood the concept of resurrection. If the resurrection is going to happen, when is going to happen? It is going to happen the second coming. Second coming means when? That is the time that God's kingdom is going to be established. Daniel 2nd chapter and 7th chapter. All the truths, what we speak today is all written by this angel which Lord used. It was actually given by our Lord Jesus Christ through this angel to the faithful church. See, what all subjects we speak? You see, we are not invented any of these things. It is the, you know, the, the faithful inventor is our Lord Jesus Christ. He has served us through whom? Through this steward. You see, our brother Russell. You know, brother Russell was a very, very wealthy huh, person. His father was a very business magnet. He had chains of stores. You see, the retail stores, what we have now. No? Like uh, big, big malls, big, big uh, shops, having branches all over the country. So similarly, his father had such a business with him, sir. So, he was a very wealthy person. So, after learning all this truth, uh, what did Brother Russell do is that he called all the preachers in America to his house. Gave them entire supplies for uh, whatever they wanted for one month. Took all the subjects, what we have been teaching you for one year, to all the pastors. At the end, Brother Russell asked them, please let us know your conclusion. Please let us know your opinion because we want that you all to teach this truth to the churches. You know, what are the, all the churches' uh, pastors replied? Brother, you are just a young lad. He was almost near 18 to 20 years old. That's all. They told, you are just a small kid. You see, your father has got a lot of property. Why don't you enjoy it? Leave all this uh, business to us. We will take care of it. Because if you start preaching all your things and all, nobody will come to the church. If you don't tell that a soul uh, goes here and there, if you don't tell that uh, hell is a place of torment, nobody will come to the church. We, if you don't tell, there is no judgment. Uh, there is no punishment. Uh, again, they are going to come in the resurrection in a thousand years. Everybody will go and sin again. So these were the thoughts uh, and answers that were given to Brother Russell. You know, what did Brother Russell do that time? Then he had to decide to do his own father's business or to do his heavenly father's business. Then Brother Russell decided to opt to, to choose to do his heavenly father's business. And since then, he began his ministry. And you see, and more than, you see, 20 lakh copies of the basic truth was given to the many people free of cost in America. During his days, he was one of the most prominent speakers in America. His sermons were published weekly in more than 4,000 newspapers, brother. You see, and uh, he had he had invented a great, uh, you see, uh, thing that is called as photodrama. Like, for example, what do you mean by photodrama during those days? You, have you seen Charlie Chaplin film, brother? It's like uh, animation. Yeah, animation. You see, a, a screen comes, there's no words. You see, but a screen comes, a photo is shown, again, a ma the words. It's like yeah. manga, manga. Uh, same thing. See, same uh, yeah, way, yeah. Eh? during those days, he used color photo. Not even the cinema theaters were using. But he used color, you see, what do you say, camera. It's so expensive, but yet he used it. You see, and uh, he used to propagate uh, the truth. What we're using now, slides to show you. He used those slides during those days. So I'm telling about 1870s, imagine. During those days, what technology was there? No? So, and uh, <coughs> He's, uh, uh, he used to do world tour. Not one tour for one nation, one country. He, he did a world tour, you see. And uh, if he had to book uh, a train, you know, how do you book a train? We book a train only for one seat or two seats. But he used to book the entire train. The entire train used to be only for uh, only for all the brethren, all the brothers and sisters. If he used to book a ship, the entire ship was his. So, such a way, 
all the brethren did uh, the lord's work uh, he went to japan china india korea in india if you come to chennai there's a place that is named after him rasal puram you see he went to japan also and uh, he went to calcutta and he went to england you see more than uh, uh, 30000 sermons uh, he preached and some of the servants were really more than 3000 uh, sorry 3 hours uh, more and uh, he was the first person to give hope to israel see, you see this photo this this photo is actually a real photo more than 2 lakh jewish people came and gathered in a hippodrome the biggest hall in america you see where he preached to the Jewish people not to get converted to Christianity, but to have faith on the Lord and to be a Jew. Shortly, his kingdom is going to be established in Israel. We saw the Israel subject, no? That subject, you see, nearly 100 years before Buddha, he spoke to the Jewish people. And uh, the entire Jewish people, Buddha, they raised and clapped and gave a good ovation for him because he was only one Christian who did not condemn the Jewish people. But he should have been encouraged to have faith on the Bible. And uh, he had, uh, you see, uh, the world's uh, largest printing press, you know, which is that one? The America dollar printing machine, you know, which is the second uh, largest uh, printing press. It was owned by our brother, you see, the second world's largest printing press, uh, you see. So he was a faithful uh, uh, messenger who actually brought uh, the Bible Students Association. He printed a lot of books through which uh, the truth uh, spread uh, to all the people. Okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, but uh, Satan, we know very well, that is very smart uh, to spoil everybody's name, isn't it? Did Satan leave our Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. Did he, did he give a good name to Jesus? Uh? Did Satan give a good name to Jesus? No. No, he spoiled his name. So similarly, after the death of Brother Russell, you see, Satan began to spoil Brother Russell's name as making him a cult and making him to be a founder of Jehovah Witnesses. But uh, if you read, if search in the Google, you see, about Brother Russell, Charles Taze Russell, immediately that thing pops out is that uh, he is the founder of Jehovah Witness. But uh, Unfortunately, none of the dear Christians have so much of patience to go inside and read it. Actually, what happens? Sir? You see, we have put a screenshot here. You see, Brother Russell is not the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses. Why? Because, see, here he clearly mentioned, Jehovah Witnesses was found when? July 1931. You read, Brother? You got it here? I put it in a square mm -hmm. box. Yeah, Brother. This was found by Judge Rutherford. You see, he was the one who was controlling Washtower and Tract Society. But the Russell actually died in 1916. Once when he died, he had for his entire property, he had made a will through a judge, not a lawyer. Judge he was a literal judge. You see, that his name was Judge Rutherford. Judge Rutherford was so cunning. That when Brother Russell was alive, he misused his faith and trust on him, and he had made the entire property for himself than to be in the name of the trust. Once when Brother Russell died, you see, he took over this organization, he changed the entire doctrines, changed the entire system, he took over his entire property, and many brethren revolted, you see, and that is the time. The, the Bible students left entire thing, you see, and came out and stood for the truth. They never fought, they never, never fought for this wealth or printing press or all these things. Lord. They had faith in the Lord that it, this is Lord's work and Lord will definitely help them. So Bible students came out, but uh, that system was continued by Judge Rutherford. And that is named as Jehovah Witnesses. But there is a lot of differences between Jehovah Witnesses and the Bible students. We, the Bible students, are not Jehovah Witnesses. Brother. We have to be very clear. See, I want this one to be very clear in your mind. We don't want to hide anything. But you want everything to be clear. See, it clearly says, see, in 1917, Joseph Franklin Rutherford succeeded Charles 
Tez Russell as Watchtower President. You see, in 1913, Rutherford adopted the name Jehovah Witnesses to difference between the two groups. <clears throat> you see, while there are similarities, there are major differences between the two groups. You see, the only similarity is Brother Trinity. We also don't believe in Trinity. They also don't believe in Trinity. But except uh, those things, there are a lot of differences between uh, Jehovah Witness and Bible students, brother. Therefore, we are not uh, Jehovah Witnesses, brother. Let that be clear in mind. Brother Russell was never the founder of, uh, you see, Jehovah Witnesses. If he was the founder, you would definitely tell it. Uh, but Satan, you know, uh, he doesn't want this truth to come out. Uh, you see, but he, is, he wants to subdue it. Uh, and some, uh, somehow wants to suppress it. Uh, but uh, you can search it. If you search it, uh, read it completely. Because some things we need to read it to come to a proper understanding. But anyway, Lord used Brother Russell to bring out meat in due season. Read, Brother. Matthew 24, 45, Brother. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, 45. 40, 40, 45, Brother. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Just a moment. Uh, who then is a faithful and a wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household mm. to give them meat in due season? Ah, meat in due season. Remember that? Who is a faithful and wise servant? During the days of Brother, there were many people who were wise, but not many were faithful. But the Russell had this two quality. Was faithful as well as wise. You know, how much money he had when he died? He had only few cents in his pocket when he died. He had sacrificed the entire thing for the Lord's, uh, you see, way. But uh, he is the faithful and wise servant through whom Lord is giving us a meat in due season. Just uh, if I put you the question, brother, you see, this truth, uh, what you were being hearing from nearly more than a year, have you ever heard it somewhere else, brother? No, I haven't heard it from somebody else, somewhere have you, else. Have you ever dreamt about it also, that the Bible might say about this one? Have you ever dreamt it? Even mm. in dreams? No, no, no. That is the way the word of God is there, brother. But this truth is totally subdued and hidden, brother. Don't you think that uh, this is uh, good that everybody should listen to this truth, brother? Uh, the classes are yeah, good. Yeah, I uh, I like the classes, the teachings. Yeah, it's isn't like, it encouraging? Uh, isn't yeah, it a good meet? Isn't it? Doesn't yeah, it give us strength? Like a faithful, uh, it makes faithful. Yes, Christian also. Yeah, trust, trust. Uh, my trust level is also like uh, the truth is also uh, capturing the truth also. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. See what the Bible says. Matthew fifth chapter eleven and twelve. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Matthew 5. Uh, should I read it, brother? Read, read, read. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely mm. for my sake. Be just and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so, for so, yeah, for so, uh, persecuted them the uh, prophets which were before you. See, before us, all the faithful prophets. Were, you take anybody's name, everybody's name were defined by the devil. You see, this point is the name. But uh, what does the Bible say? Jesus says, rejoice. Rejoice when somebody is calling your name, speaking false things which are not there upon you. You see, rejoice. Read Luke 6 26. Luke 6 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Also did their father to the false prophets. You see, if everybody is speaking well of you, be careful. 
That's what uh, everybody speaks well about Jehovah's Witness. You see, all the Jehovah's Witnesses speak very great uh, about themselves. Uh, uh, why? They're all using his property. Okay, let them use. Not a problem. You see, if somebody is speaking well of you, beware. This is not a good name that is given by the Lord. It is given by the devil. You see, uh, that is how they spoke about the false prophets. Uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, read Luke 16, 15. Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Luke 16. Uh, okay. 15. Hmm. Uh, okay. 16, 15 is written like this. And he said unto them, You the who is justified yourself before men, but God knows your hearts, but that which is highly estimate, estimated. Among men is abomination in the sight of God. Oh, that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You see, God. Huh? Russell was so faithful, brother. He just lived for a period of nearly huh? more than 40, 42 years. You know how many pages he has written? 39,000 pages, not repeated. 39,000 pages. Average four pages per day. And he was a elder for more than 250 churches all over the world. Not only in America, all over the world. Anyway, you see, the churches took a decision to ban his books. You can't see his books or you can't see his truth. Anyway, you, can, you, can't, you, you won't get it at all. It's totally banned in all the Bible societies. You go anywhere in the world. This truth is not allowed to preach at all. <clears throat> Hence, dear brethren, these are the seven angels. You see, seven angels uh, they did not suffer little. They were beheaded. Uh, they were chopped off. Uh, you see, they were isolated in, uh, you see, cannibal islands. Uh, you see, they were forsaken. They were betrayed. Uh, but the Lord did not leave them. Okay? So, may the Lord bless these words. Uh, if you have any doubts, any questions, you can ask. Don't hesitate. Anything you want to ask, you can ask.